Hey everyone, good evening. This is episode niner of Healthy Kids Simple Solutions. So I had a little Tommy Boy reference there, and I'm actually doing this live off of LTE because our Wi-Fi is down. I don't know if this snowstorm knocked that out or what happened, but if it starts to cut out or lag, I apologize. But in this episode, what we're talking about is ticks and jerky movements in kids. And when I say ticks, I mean things. Uh, it could be a vocal tick. It could be um, something as simple as like throat clearing. It could be uh, a motor tick where they're doing something with their face or like a, a shrug or something with their hands. There's all different types of ticks. And then also jerky movements where they kind of just look like they're constantly fidgeting, whether they're sitting down or whether they're just standing up. So uh, with ticks, the first two things that I always will check for in the history and ask the parent for is one, did the tick happen? after an infection or after an illness because that will really determine which way we go with how to handle it if it wasn't from an infection or uh you know illness or something like that then what i start to look for is kind of a cerebellar issue and there's a part of your brain called the cerebellum it's right back here at the at the base of your neck and what it's in charge of is it actually coordinates your entire brain so if you think about your brain receiving a bunch of input a lot of the input goes right through the cerebellum and then that kind of coordinates it and I picture it as like a filter or it tells where that information to go for the rest of your brain. Also, if you're talking about specifically with ticks, the cerebellum is the motor planning part of your brain. So it helps with eye movements, it helps with movements for the entire body. So if you're going to walk or throw a ball or do whatever, it's coming from the cerebellum. That's what's planning all of this. What's going on, Aaron in Nebraska Home Pediatrics on live? How's it going? Uh, so yeah, the cerebellum, if you pict picture it as kind of the motor planning part or the part that's in charge of movement, if it gets off or it's uncoordinated or if it's not working the way that it should, you can see how that would contribute to uh, potentially ticks and things like that. So if the cerebellum isn't working the way that it should or if it's got an imbalance and one side stronger than the other or if it's just not coordinated in general it can cause um, or contribute to a lot of ticks or jerky movements and things like that so the three things that i always do to address the cerebellum with kids with ticks is one is actually just as simple as getting rid of gluten and I know a lot of, I'll probably get some eye rolls for that and they'll be like, are you kidding me? You think gluten is tied to ticks? Like how could that possibly be? Usually there is a gut issue with these kids. So if you look at how gluten, don't get stuck in. Okay, I promise I won't get stuck at the office. It knocked out the Wi-Fi, but I'll be fine. But thanks for checking in, uh, Aaron. So where was I? Uh, gluten. So if gluten... If, if your child is eating gluten and there is a they have kind of a leaky gut or an inflamed gut, what's going to happen is that gluten's not going to get digested. It's going to get dumped straight into the bloodstream. And then you have things called antibodies. And antibodies are what kind of attack maybe bacteria or viruses. They're kind of the good guys of your immune system and they help keep you healthy. But they get tricked when they see all this gluten in the bloodstream because basically it's it's foreign to the body, it's supposed to be in the gut, so when it's in the blood, they're like, what is this thing? We need to attack it, we need to get rid of it right now. So you create all these antibodies for it and it creates all this inflammation. So what happens is the antibodies actually start to attack the cerebellum, they, uh, the inflammation affects the, how the cerebellum works. So it really affects, and you'll see kids, if they're really overloaded with gluten, they can't track their eyes smoothly from side to side. It's really shaky. And you're seeing the same thing. It's basically ones with eye movements because it's coming from the, the same part of the brain, and then also with ticks. So they might excessively do something with their body. Um, and gluten is a huge thing that could be contributing to that. Uh, the second thing is just sitting around. So if you picture kids uh, are in school all day, they're sitting in their chair, they're not moving, uh, you know, there's limited recess, and then they come home and they just play, you know, Fortnite or whatever it is, and, or they're watching YouTube, um, and they're not doing anything movement-wise, especially during the winter time. Um, so all they're doing is just sitting all day and they're being stagnant. That is going to be very bad for the cerebellum. It's gonna cause actually atrophy. Um, it could shrink the, the cell size of them. It could actually even just, atrophy means to die off. 
So it's just not a good thing for the cerebellum if you're constantly sitting there and not good for a kid that's experiencing tics or jerky movements and things like that. So what is the third point? It's basically just the opposite of the second point. It's actually getting up and moving and making sure that you're stimulating their cerebellum with some movement. And uh, not only that, but increasing their core musculature. So if you think of your cores right here and then all the way along the back as well, kids have super weak core musculature in the back. Um, if you have them do kind of like a Superman where they're laying on their stomach and lifting their, their arms and legs up, they usually are either can't do it or they cannot do it for more than you know a few seconds, maybe 10 seconds, and that core is really weak. And the, real, the problem with that is the core is what feeds into the cerebellum. So if they have really weak musculature, they're getting really weak input into the cerebellum, the cerebellum can't work the way that it should, therefore it could be contributing to ticks. So that's kind of uh, some of the steps I'll take with kids that are struggling with those things. The biggest thing I can actually do in the office is a, an adjustment and specifically a, a hemispheric adjustment. So we wanna make sure we're targeting the weaker side of the cerebellum. We don't wanna stimulate the side that's already strong because that could potentially even make the problem worse. So we wanna make sure we're specifically targeting the correct side of the cerebellum, which is gonna kinda help recalibrate it and get it working efficiently. And then uh, that can, can help uh, with, with ticks. So that is what I have for that. Uh, we have a workshop on February 26th called Unraveling Neurodevelopmental Disorders here in Elkhorn. Uh, I'm really excited about that, so that's next Tuesday. If you would like, please uh, RSVP for that. It's completely free. Um, we will be talking a little bit about Tourette's and tics there, but it's more going to be about um, ADHD, concentration, focus, uh, reading problems, reading comprehension. We're gonna be talking a lot about something called primitive reflexes, which most of these kids have. So if that's at all interesting to you, please check out the link below. Um, like I said, it's completely free, so share it with a parent, come with a parent, uh, come together and learn about these things. It, it's pretty cool stuff where you can learn about how to naturally help your kid get better and how to make sure they pr went through the proper stages of, of brain development. So that's what I have for you this evening. I hope you got something out of it. Share it with a friend that could use this information. Otherwise, I'll see you guys tomorrow for episode 10 of Healthy Kids Simple Solutions. So I'll see you then.